cannabinoids in focus, the rise of THC in marijuana over the years. The growing popularity of marijuana leads to the creation of more and more potent products. The amount of THC, the active ingredient in marijuana, has increased from 4% to up to 12% in just a few years. Experts believe this trend could lead to higher addiction rates. In the past, marijuana was not so strong, which now makes its effect on the body much stronger. Even medical marijuana offered by pharmacies today carries an extraordinary power, containing in some varieties more than 20%. THC, marijuana, in its natural process, creates over 100 different compounds, called cannabinoids. Whether we are talking about sativa or indica, the two main types of cannabis plants, tetrahydrocannabinol, THC, and cannabidiol, CBD, are the most recognizable components of its composition. Cannabinoids generate the feeling of relaxation and euphoria characteristic of marijuana. Over the years, a dynamic increase in the concentration of active ingredients has been observed. In 1994, various varieties of hemp contained only 4% THC. Today's reality presents a much different picture. These amounts have increased by leaps and bounds. A study published by the National Library of Medicine shows that the potency of marijuana has tripled. The amount of THC drastically increased from 4% up to 12% in just a few years. However, this is only the tip of the iceberg. There are specific varieties of marijuana, selected for the highest THC content, which are characterized by a concentration of 15%. Up to 25%, a sharp increase in the potency of plants can lead to an increase in the risk associated with its consumption. Nevertheless, both THC and CBD also have their uses in medicine which further complicates the debate about the growing concentration of psychoactive components in cannabis. The growing popularity of marijuana leads to the development of new, stronger products and the discovery of innovative methods of its consumption. In the past, the plant was usually cultivated and then burned. Currently, we have a multitude of cannabis extraction and utilization techniques that allow the extraction of psychoactive compounds or terpenes, which are aromatic oils. Modern science has revealed effective methods for isolating larger amounts of resin, a sticky substance produced from the trichomes found on cannabis inflorescences, which are its outer protective protrusions. Cannabis extracts and concentrates allow you to experience the effects of marijuana in a way that is much more intense than is possible using traditional forms of consumption. They are becoming an increasingly desirable choice among users seeking a more powerful experience. The evolution of trends shows how far innovation in the cannabis products sector goes. Extracts are products derived from plants that are produced using solvents, such as butane, to chemically extract the resin. The physical properties of the extracts depend on the type of solvent used. Examples of extracts include butane hash oil, CO2 oil, distillate. Butane hash oil, as an extraction product takes many different forms that depend on the precision and specificity of the extraction process. These include live resin, shatter, terp sauce, sap, snap and pull and sugar. Each of these products has its own unique characteristics that result from both the specific production method and the cannabis variety used CO2 oil is another extraction product whose production is based on the use of carbon dioxide under high pressure. CO2 extraction is considered safe and environmentally friendly, but requires specialized equipment and skills. The result is a pure and concentrated oil, 
which is mainly valued for its purity. Distillate is the most refined form of THC. Its production consists in the distillation of marijuana extracts, which allows the removal of any undesirable substances, such as impurities or solvent residues. This process results in a very clean and potent product that is perfect for those looking for an intense cannabis experience. Concentrates are a unique product, obtained by using mechanical methods to isolate the resin, without the use of any solvents. This process involves physically separating the valuable trichomes containing cannabinoids and terpenes from the rest of the plant material. As a result of these activities, we obtain products with much higher potency and purity compared to traditional marijuana. This approach allows for the maximum use of the plant's potential, while preserving its natural properties. Examples of concentrates include hashish, rosin. Concentrates are much more potent than traditional cannabis flowers thanks to the higher amounts of resin that they mainly consist of. According to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, resins, isolated active ingredients in marijuana, contain three to five times more THC than the marijuana plant. Hash is a product obtained by mechanically sifting marijuana flowers, then crushing or heating the resin, which leads to the formation of a sticky blob, it is one of the oldest forms of concentrates. Rosin is a relatively new concentrate production method that uses heat and pressure to release the resin, which is then collected and used as a concentrate. Planting forests could cool the planet more than previously thought. Planting trees is one of the simplest and most effective natural solutions to the global warming climate crisis. However, the effect of trees on Earth's temperature is much more complex than previously thought. Scientists feared that reforestation in mid-latitudes could even lead to global warming due to the high capacity of trees to absorb sunlight. New research by researchers at Princeton University has found that these concerns miss a key element, the cloud. Experts report that denser cloud formations are associated with forested areas, and that means reforestation is likely to be more effective at cooling Earth's atmosphere than previously thought. The results of the analyzers were published in the journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Could reforestation in mid-latitude areas like North America or Europe actually make the planet warmer? Forests absorb large amounts of solar radiation as a result of their low albedo, which is a measure of a surface's ability to reflect sunlight. In the tropics, the low albedo is offset by the greater uptake of carbon dioxide by dense, year-round vegetation. However, there were concerns that in temperate climates trapped solar heat could offset the cooling effect. No one has known so far whether planting trees in mid-latitudes is good or bad because of the problem of albedo, says the author of the work, an expert in environmental engineering, Professor Amalcare Porporato. If you consider that clouds tend to form more often over forested areas, planting trees over large areas is beneficial and should be done for climate purposes, he explains. Clouds during the day have a cooling effect on the Earth. In addition to directly blocking the sun, they have a high albedo, similar to that of ice and snow. However, clouds are difficult to include in research and therefore have often been overlooked in analyses of climate change mitigation, says Professor Portfolio. The research team also included Sarah Serasoli from the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering and Jun Ying, an assistant professor at Nanjing University of Information Science and Technology. 
Corporato and Ying have previously reported that climate models underestimate the cooling effect of the diurnal cloud cycle. Last year, they also reported that climate change could increase daily cloud cover in arid regions such as the American Southwest, which are now ideal for solar energy production. In the latest study, Cerasoli, Corporato and Yin investigated the influence of vegetation on cloud formation in mid-latitude regions. To do this, they combined satellite cloud data from 2001 to 2010 with models related to the interaction between plants and the atmosphere. Scientists tested the relationship between different types of vegetation and the atmospheric boundary layer, which interacts directly with the Earth's surface. In this way, they wanted to see whether cloud formation varies depending on the type of vegetation found in a given area. They focused their research on temperate latitudes. The effects of both reforestation of previously cleared land and afforestation of areas previously devoid of trees were analyzed. The team found that for mid-latitude regions, the cooling effect caused by clouds, combined with the carbon-fixing effect of trees, exceeded the solar radiation absorbed by forested areas. The models showed that clouds form more often and earlier over forested areas than over meadows and other areas with grassy vegetation. More clouds had a cooling effect on the Earth's atmosphere, and the fact that they formed earlier meant that they had more time to have a cooling effect. These findings can help guide the development of appropriate land allocation policies for afforestation and agriculture. However, the authors emphasize that we must be careful when making such decisions. We cannot only consider climate change, but we also need to consider other factors such as biodiversity and the fact that land is also needed for food production, says Serasoli. Further research should take into account the role of clouds, but also focus on more specific regions. The most important thing is not to make the situation worse, adds Professor. Portfolio. The Earth system combines a huge number of factors. If we change one thing, it is very difficult to predict how it will affect other parts of the system.